with the, um, do the math, everybody. If, you, uh, if you're using about 100 calories, the average person, you wanna take in as many carbohydrate, as much carbohydrate as you can, as many calories as you can. Um, you can only take in about 66 grams of carbohydrate per hour, not mile, but per hour we're talking. 66 grams, I believe uh, somebody grab a thing of gel. I believe goo is about what, 30, 35, cliff shots, same about 30, 35 grams of carbohydrate. So right there, one gel is gonna take you about halfway of what your capacity is for an hour, but you're only halfway there. Now, when you reach 66 grams of carbohydrate, that's where people start getting nauseous because they've taken in too many carbohydrate. That's where in the middle of the race, there are other reasons you can do this, but there, the middle of the race, uh, you may throw up because you've taken in too many carbs. Your body just can only absorb so much in such a small amount of time, like an hour. Got it? So figure out, calculate with, I think Nguyen is, I want to say it's, I want to say it's similar to Gatorade at about, you're probably going to get in about six calorie grams of carbohydrate per cup, per mile. You're going to have to calculate cups water tables per hour if you're doing Nguyen, which is good stuff. I, I, I hate Gatorade. I love Nguyen. Flavor, you know, they have different flavors. Uh, lemon, lime is what they're using on the course. Test it out. I, I don't know if you like lemon, lime. I, you know, what the hell. Um, everybody has a different taste, but it's really good product. Um, at any rate, I can't drink Gatorade. Nguyen, I can do. Um, the, you figure about five, I, I have to take a look at this, about five, you're looking at about, it depends on how much they fill the cup, you're looking at probably about four ounces of water in a five ounce cup or liquid, new one, you're, from that four ounces, uh, they calculated on the jar by 16 ounces, so a fourth of that per, for, per cup per a mile, a dish. So figure about five calories to maybe six calorie, grams, excuse me, of carbohydrate per cup. Then multiply that by how many stations on your pace you will hit per hour. And then add in maybe every 45 minutes, another hundred, uh, another, what, 35 grams of carbohydrate from a gel, something like that. Those of you who can't do gels, try baby food. Um, Great stuff, but it won't give you minerals if you're doing baby food. There's little gel packs with a little plastic knob on the top, same, almost the same size, a little bigger than, than Cliff Shots, gels, the, the gels. Um, you, you're going to need to take in maybe a mineral pill here and there to, to compensate because baby food does not have a lot of sodium in it. Look at the sodium concentrate of your the baby food that you get. Try and get 80 to 90 calories in the baby food little packet that you buy if you get baby food because you can't do goo or cliff shots. I do, I do goo and cliff shots. Um, I do all of those, but I do feel better with baby food. I got to tell you, it's mulched fruit, any kind of mulched fruit. That's baby food. Those little, they're great. Any grocery store. Um, a little more expensive, but I highly recommend them. So here's another thing I want you guys to think about. Another more calculating, more doing math. There's a lot of math in this one. And Rose Bowl half too. But here's another one. You have, I said this before, 80 minutes to go when your heart rate is a little higher than marathon race pace what we'll call a little above lactate threshold. The science is you're, you're maintaining more waste product in the form of lactic acid than you're getting rid of. That's lactate threshold, all right? I'm not gonna explain that more than that because it doesn't really matter. But a little above lactate threshold, which is in itself a little above marathon race pace, 
right that it's a little below threshold that area in there above marathon race pace around threshold you got 80 minutes to go before you run out of glycogen or your brain thinks you're running a little low on glycogen and those governors shut you down and say we're hitting the wall even though you you don't run out of glycogen completely, your body won't let you do that. But your, your brain, your subconscious, 90% of your brain function is unconscious to you. And all of you right now have no idea what your liver, your spleen, your kidneys, your pancreas, your you name it, many, many, many vital functions of your body, all organized, controlled by your subconscious brain. 90% of your brain function is unconscious. When you run, you don't think arm, leg, arm, leg. It's all subconscious. That's why changing form becomes so difficult. All right. Uh, so it's your subconscious that's shutting you down, causing you to hit the wall. So another story we, we talked about, um, breaking through your governors. So that's a whole other lecture. But you want to maintain that 80 minutes to go, you want to maintain that glycogen consumption or, or lack of glycogen consumption and putting in more carbohydrate to get glycogen absorbed, right? So you're still on full. Your brain is saying, hey, you're on full. I feel great. Calculate where, everybody, calculate where on this course, this LA Marathon course, where will you be with 80 minutes left to go, especially pace leaders? You need to know this mile marker. 80 minutes left to go. This is critical. For those of you who want to have people in your group have a PR, for those of you who want to have a PR, this is critical math. Now, 80 minutes left to go, a point on the course. If, again, you are a 10 minute per miler. Where are you with 80 minutes left to go? All right, 80 divided by 10 is eight miles, right? Eight miles minus 26.2 miles is 18.2 miles, right? Let me say that again, 80, per 80, 80 minutes divided by 10 minute per mile pace or whatever your pace is, is eight miles, eight miles. 26.2 miles, your entire marathon, minus that eight miles, or 80 minutes to go, eight miles to go, is mile 18.2. So group six, at mile 18.2, let's call it 18 and a half, just to play it safe, at around there, right around here in Century City, uh, oh, excuse me, right around the point where you're passing the finish line, if you're in group six, um, you, our group six pace leader will do well to call out if you, how many of you feel great? Everybody, come on, let's come on around each other. Um, get close. And people will be wondering like, really, we're doing this? We're getting close to each other? And yeah. Just kind of get everybody in, I have an announcement. Get them over. And the announcement is, if you were within 80 minutes to go of our finish time, we are going to finish on time. For that group would be, what is that? 220 something, whatever, regardless, 230, whatever. Anyway, we are gonna finish on time, but if you feel pretty good, slowly, and I mean this much faster, slowly pull ahead of our group. You will have a good PR. You will break our goal finish time on that sign. Got it? Uh, pace leaders, talk to the people in your groups from the very, very beginning. Going up the first hill, the first few steps, call out to everyone around you, and you will draw in a group, I guarantee it call out to everyone around you, slow down everybody, save that glycogen, don't go up this hill too fast, 
slow it down. Come on, you guys, join us. Get up that hill slowly. Save the glycogen. You will draw a crowd to your sign. Got it? That's where you do that. Right. Step one, going up that first hill in Dodger Stadium, right out of the finish, excuse me, right out of the start line. I just really quick, I want to go back and show you our pace chart. And here we go, really quick. Yeah? Okay. Um, Right up here, you'll see the, the finish time. And that's from this box right up here. Um, it says marathon finish time. That's the finish time for this chart is 4.30, which is similar in nature to that 10 minute per mile. In this case, it's 10.18. Um, that group six that we're talking about, this would be similar chart for you guys. If you wanna change that, all you need to do is change 30, to zero, now four hours, and watch all the columns. Bam, they all change. Simple as that. Now you're at 9.09 average pace, and you're going to four hours. You want to change that to three hours. Make sure there's an AM at the end of this, pace leaders who have this chart. Anyone who wants this, email me. I am glad to send you my Excel spreadsheet for the LA Marathon that you're looking at now. Um, if you want to go to three hours, change the four to a three, and blammo, they all change. And 652 is your average pace. Miguel Magana, this is you. And the two Miguels, Miguel uh, Magana and Miguel um, Peralta. What? Peralta. Peralta, thank you. I am so sorry. Peralta. I got Miguel right at least. Anyway, let's go back to 4.30 just for the hell of it. Make sure that AM is still in there. It must look like that at the top. So 4.30. All right. So you can see all these numbers change. Um, actually, had we gone back to the three, you would notice that the first mile is, you know, the mile five here, look at this. Average pace, 10.18. Average pace, mile five. Don't forget, part of this is going uphill but there's also that good third of a mile going downhill that's averaged into that mile five equation. And yet mile five is still, what is that? 1018 to 1253? That's just, you've just, you're dropping pace. And you still have some downhill at the end of that mile. So this isn't even accurate the 1253 that you're looking at, it's actually slower than that because at the end of the mile, you're speeding up, right? Does this make sense? Got it? That is really, really slow. Um, Adele, I just saw your, your thing. I will send you the spreadsheet. Um, Anyone just send me an email, I'll send you the spreadsheet, glad to do it. Thank you. That is a crawl, absolutely. That is a crawl up temple. Remember we were talking about going up temple, you go over Grand, you come up the first two hills, third street, first street, you go over Grand, the good view, and then you turn left, you go down the hill, down temple, and then under that overpass, you start going up and up and up and up and up and up. And then you go over the freeway up and up, and then you go over the side street up and up. That's what we're talking about, mile five. And then part of that is actually downhill. So all of that is kind of calculated into it. So, you know, look for, you know, when you hit mile six, if you're at about an hour four, you know, keep in mind that 10 minute or so pace, you'd probably want to be at like an hour. You hit mile six, you're looking at kind of four minutes behind schedule. Got it? I mean, that's, you're way behind schedule. Um, and that's a pretty conservative run. And that's still, dramatic reduction and th th just look at that i it's just like the rose bowl half you guys it's the same thing but twice you see what i'm saying um then look at this game plan every single one of you you change the finish time you got the same game plan coming up whoops hang on let me cursor down 
Now, um, you'll notice the biggest drop on Doheny Mall 15, now that, what is it, 1018 average pace? What was it, 1018 average pace? Where am I? Uh, 1018 average pace. So mile 15, you got that big, biggest drop, big downhill. Now that 1018 becomes not even a minute per mile faster. I'm not having you flying down that hill. Um, you're going to put, what, about a 50, 50. Now, now it's going to change. You know, faster runners and slowest walkers will be a little less of a, an extreme. But even group six, which is a pretty big extreme, uh, you're, you're only about 50 seconds slower around there. What is it, 1018 versus 923? Somebody do the math, I don't know. Not, you know, you're not killing yourself flying down that hill. Okay, um, these are the big ticket items. 80 minutes left to go, you're at uh, this group, this particular group, is at like mile 18.2, somewhere around there. Um, but you'll note with all the groups, this is where you send your people ahead of you. By the way, pace leaders, if you finish your day, those carrying the signs, the official pace leaders of the LA Marathon, if you finish your day with a third of the people ahead of you, a third of your people behind you, and maybe a third or less of the people with you, you have totally nailed it and you have done a great job at the LA Marathon. You could not have done better. You could not do better than that. A third ahead, a third behind, a third with you, you're gold. You've struck gold and you finish on time, you're just a th triple, triple threat, scary human being. You're just unbelievable. Almost all of you will do that. I am betting 80% will have that experience, just like the Rose Bowl, maybe even more. Next year, even better. Uh, my, my group's in Griffith Park. Every year we have a 70% PR rate. They get it. Slower in the uphills, faster on the downhills, USA Marathon training, 70%. 60% some years in the past, PR rate. Um, you guys, we can do this too. Last mile, blech, mile 25. Now, you'll note you're going up a hill and yet you're still, oh, excuse me, this, this would be, you're, you're ending mile 25 to mile 26. You're ending at mile 26. The uphill kind of ends at mile 26, really the finish line. So this whole mile, you've, you've gone from downhill 904, you're, you're see, you can, you're kind of speeding up a little bit. Um, but not that much, 941 versus 1016, what is that, uh, 20 second, what is that, 40 second? 40 second per mile pace faster on a downhill toward the end of your race, where if you got the glycogen left, go and use it. For, and hopefully you'll have the glycogen left because you've taken in enough carbohydrate along the way and you've kept your heart rate down enough, long enough, so you're not using that carbohydrate, you're still up. But mile 25 to mile 26, now you're plummeting down slowing down 941. You're still not at that 1016 pace. You're still about, what is that, 40 seconds faster going up that hill. That last mile is gonna be a killer, but you can get up that mile with that glycogen at that, that final mile, everybody. Um, you can tool around with this, but you wanna make sure that you end up, you'll note, this is actually a little short. Um, I gave a little wiggle room of a hundredth of a mile, a, a, a thousandth of a mile um, wiggle room. It should be 26.2. My chart is 26.19. So it's a little wiggle room in there. A uh, couple seconds, 10 seconds, whatever. Um, but you can see, then you hit the finish line and you're flying. The last, you round that corner, you see that finish line dead in front of you less than 0.2 miles to go, just floor it. Whatever you got left, 
go for that finish line, that, that 10, 16 uh, pace of 430 that you're looking at. I have them at 9, 10. They are flooring it to the finish line. They are just cruising. Pace leader, be gone, you know? Just go. So that is the end of my presentation. Um, I thank you all very much for watching this. I am going to stop the recording and I'm going to answer all of your questions off the recording. But for any of you watching the recorded thing, um, thank you very much for chiming in this whole long period. I really greatly appreciate your listening. And for everybody else, hang on. Uh, we're going to be doing we're going to be doing more talk as soon as I figure out how to turn this darn thing off. And here we go. Stop recording. Here we go. We're going to end it. Good night, everybody who's watching the recording. And hang on, everybody else. And good night. And bye.